Yo, what is up you guys? My name is Benji and welcome back to another video. This is the third part of the three part series of how to get started in real estate, basically from the beginning to end. In this section, we're going to talk about closing on the property, what happens from there. And I also want to show you guys three deals, three live deals that I would consider investing into. Let's get right into it, guys. After you get your offer accepted, you're moving forward with all the stuff that we talked about in the last section. Make sure to watch the last section if you guys haven't already. At this point, prior to closing, you're going to have to get everything together between you, between the insurance for the place, between the bank. It's going to be a whole lot of back and forth between you, the agent, the bank, your insurance, the agent, the bank, it's gonna be a lot of back and forth, but it's all very, very doable, so don't be too alarmed by it. Now that you're closing on the property, it's going to matter on what the property's use is going to be for. Now, if it's a primary, if it's a rental, or if it's a flip. So if, if it's a primary, there's not really much of a game plan. I mean, you're really gonna be just moving into it, hopefully, maybe doing some renovations while you're in it even. If it's a rental, you're going to be basically getting it ready, getting it up to par to be able to rent out. And if it's a flip, obviously you're going to be getting in there and getting it renovated to hopefully sell ASAP. But let's assume this is a rental because I'm sure a lot of you guys do want to get into, you know, being a landlord and get, owning some rentals, which is what I'm doing currently. So if it is a rental, there are going to be a few things you want to look into. And one is definitely going to be finding a management company unless you want to self-manage it yourself. The cool thing about hiring a management company, which I didn't know when I first got into this, is it's actually really, really simple. I always, I always was kind of intimidated by the idea, but it's really, really simple. There's tons of management companies all over. I'm sure there's some in honestly every single city out there. What I did for the property that I'm using a management company for right now is I just did a Google search and a Yelp search and found the top rated management company in that area. And keep in mind, a lot of management companies have a lot of bad reviews. I feel like it's just one of those things, one of those services that sort of gets like ragged on. I mean, it just is what it is. So find the one that has the best reviews, maybe have a meeting with them. I had a few phone call meetings with the management company, told them what I have and asked them, you know, what their pricing is, how it works, etc. It's really, really simple. Basically, all they ask you for is 8% per year, which is just one month of rent because it's 12 months of rent. So 8% is one month of rent. So you give them one month of rent per year and then they do everything for you. They take the keys, they find a renter, they qualify them, they deal with the HOA, they deal with any phone calls, any headaches. If there's something to be done to the property, like let's say there's like a leaky pipe or let's say a floorboard breaks or something, they will take care of it. They will just bill you. If it's over a certain amount of money, they will call you and make sure that you want to spend the money on the repair, etc. But they do everything for you. You don't have to have your name attached to anything. You literally just get paid once per month. It's super, super simple. And if you ask me, it's worth the one month of rent per year, especially if you're buying the right property and you're making enough money off it, which hopefully we're all doing here. It's very much so worth the one month um, of income to hire the right management company and have them do everything for you. So I will be utilizing management companies ongoingly, I feel like from here on out until, until there's maybe a moment where I want to self-manage everything. But for now, I feel like management companies are the way to go. All right, next guys, I want to walk through some actual deals that I would consider investing into. All of these deals, I think I have one, I have, yeah, I have three deals. So all three of these deals are areas that I know, guys. These are areas that I've either lived near or I have family that's lived near. These are all properties in areas that I know pretty well. So keep that in mind. This isn't just like a random property I'm pulling up. So this right here, this is a property. It's a condo. It's a one bedroom, one bathroom. It's just under 1,000 square feet. It's listed for 256,000. This is an area downtown is a very nice area. I'll go through all the pictures here. If you guys can check it out. I've already looked at these, so I've sort of qualified them already. As I go through some of the pictures, I want to tell you guys a little bit of the breakdown of the price and what I think this one could work out for. So this one, I would consider this property literally, literally ready to go. I would say that a renter could move in here ASAP. You would need to do nothing to this property. So this is a turnkey property. You would not have to go in here and renovate or anything. You could always update it and make it a little bit more, um, you know, up to date as far as like modern, um, you know, appliances, etc. But overall, it's a very, very good layout. It's in a very nice area. The price at 256 is going to give you a mortgage of something around $1,200 or so. I think maybe like $1,000 with a 20% down. The HOA fee is very low for a condo. I mean, relatively speaking, 260 per month. And if you look at the calculator, it takes into consideration the principal interest, HOA dues, the property taxes, and homeowner's insurance. Homeowner's insurance, you can get it for lower than this. This is probably just a decent... Um, you know, decent premium. So you're looking at around $1,666 per month. Now this one bedroom bathroom, again, guys, I know this area, this place could easily rent for, in my opinion, a 1900 to 22, maybe even $2,400 per month. There's units that are smaller than this in this area that are renting for more than that. So in that aspect, you'd be making an easy three to 5% uh, 
return per year off your money. And if you paid cash or you put a higher amount down, you'd be paying less interest. You could, of course, make even more. So this is a good example of a condo that I would be willing to maybe invest into, honestly, myself. I actually I actually have one that's quite similar to this in this area, um, especially if you got it for like 240 or 245 if you can negotiate a little bit. This one would definitely be a winner if you ask me for a rental. All right, next, guys, here's another property. This one is actually in Orlando. Let's go through the pictures, take a look together. So this one, I would say, would need maybe five to ten percent renovation i would say that this one could be updated a little bit again it is ready to go if you'd want to just rent it out but i do think that this one being in orlando in a decently hot area i would say this one could be spruced up a little bit and raise the rents up a little bit it's just with just with some simple upgrades and some updating um this one is an area that i know pretty well also this one is listed for 262 it's a pretty small three bedroom two bathroom so i think it is a little bit overpriced but this one I think could rent for around 1950 to maybe 2250, 1950 to 2250. And if we take a look at the um, payment calculator, if you take into consideration the principal interest, property taxes, and homeowners insurance, this homeowners insurance is not accurate. I feel like it'd be way way cheaper for this. I don't know why it's guessing that it's so high, um, but I think it'd probably be closer to like 150. Um, there's no HOA in this one, so you will be you know saving money there. I think this one could easily make maybe four to seven percent per year and again even more if you were to pay cash for this and even more if you were to get the purchase price down a little bit but th but this is another example of something that i would be interested into something that you could add value to you could paint it you could do a few little cosmetic things maybe five to ten thousand dollars of renovations at the most to move it up to the twenty four hundred twenty five hundred dollar per month house so this is another good example and finally, guys, the third final example, this is a different type of example. This is a brand new build, basically. I think this one's like three years old, but it's a new, a newer build, at least. This one needs absolutely nothing. It has a great backyard. It's This one is listed for 238 so this is a little bit cheaper. And this area is a little bit more up and coming. That's why the house is cheaper. The good things about this one is it's almost a brand new build, so you will need to do almost no renovations ever to this one unless you hold on it for a very, very long time. It is in a new up and coming area, so hopefully you do catch that appreciation because it is an exploding area. Again, I know these areas pretty well, guys. So this is another example of a turnkey property for a rental. Rents in this area, sixteen to $1,800, maybe a little bit more for this one. Um, so again, if you take into consideration the payment calculator, you're at fourteen forty-six. So this one year, you're not going to make as much, but keep in mind, it is almost brand new. So hopefully you'll capture more off of the fact that you'll be doing no maintenance to it at all. And the fact that it's an up and coming area. So you'll hopefully see some bigger appreciation. So there we have it guys. There's my three part series on real estate investing. I've been wanting to make this for a while, just basically breaking down everything I've learned from the last year, really, since I bought my first property back last June or last July, up until closing on my most recent one, just about four months ago. So. Real estate's been really fun to learn a lot about. There is, a, there is a learning curve, so I definitely urge you guys to try to learn as much as you can before you even spend your hard-earned money on it like anything else. I think the learning part is the hardest once you know what you know and you're in it, though. It's really just a matter of putting the work in and making things happen, so it's really possible. But I hope this three-part series helped you guys a little bit, and I hope this kind of inspired some of you guys to get into real estate investing. I really urge you guys to. If you guys have any more questions, of course, comment them down below. Otherwise, also make sure to join our free Discord server to hit me up on there. I'm always in there talking. So with that being said, guys, thanks so much for watching this. Also, please hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. And lastly, you guys, we do have a Discord server that's dedicated to investors like you. It's full of dividend investors, option traders, day traders, and much, much more. So join the Discord. The link is down below in the description. It's absolutely free to join. And I hope we see all of you guys in there.